This ecosystem started with a few buckets of soil. It was filled with water, ensuring integrity with stones and wood. It came to life with fish, invertebrates, and plants. I made a video of this whole process, named How to Make Natural Planted Dirted Tank. I received a lot of questions from you. I'm answering a few of them in this video. While you enjoy the views from this tank. So let's start. Overcrowding a dirted tank can potentially cause damage to the substrate and disrupt the balance of the tank. In a dirted tank, the substrate is typically a layer of nutrient-rich soil that provides essential nutrients for plant growth. When there are too many fish in the tank, they can disturb the substrate by digging, uprooting plants, or stirring up debris. This disturbance can lead to the release of excess nutrients and organic matter into the water column, which can cause an imbalance in the tank. Excessive nutrients can promote the growth of algae and other unwanted organisms, leading to poor water quality and potentially harming the plants and fish in the tank. Additionally, overcrowding can increase the bio-load in the tank, putting additional strain on the filtration system. The increased waste production from the fish may overwhelm the beneficial bacteria in the substrate and filter, leading to ammonia and nitrite spikes, which can be harmful to the fish. Overcrowding can also lead to increased competition for resources such as food and oxygen, which can further stress the fish and compromise their health. Additionally, overcrowding can increase the risk of disease transmission and aggression among the fish. To prevent damage to a dirted tank, it is important to maintain appropriate stocking levels and provide enough space for the fish to swim and for plants to grow. In a dirted tank, natural CO2 production occurs through the breakdown of organic matter in the substrate. Over time, these organic materials break down through microbial activity releasing carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Beneficial bacteria present in the substrate consume the organic matter and respire, producing CO2 as a waste product. This CO2 is then released into the water column. Plants in the tank also contribute to natural CO2 production. During respiration, plants consume oxygen and release CO2. This process occurs continuously even when photosynthesis is not taking place. The roots of aquatic plants also respire, releasing CO2 into the substrate. This CO2 can then diffuse into the water column. The concentration of CO2 in the water is influenced by factors such as temperature, water movement, and surface area for gas exchange. Controlling ammonia levels in a dirt tank without a test kit can be challenging, as it is important to monitor ammonia levels to ensure the health of your tank inhabitants. Regular water changes can help dilute and remove excess ammonia from the tank. Overfeeding can lead to excess waste and ammonia production. Feed your fish and other tank inhabitants only what they can consume within a few minutes and remove any uneaten food. Live plants can help absorb ammonia and other nitrogenous compounds from the water. They can act as natural filters and help maintain water quality. Consider adding fast-growing plants like hornwort, anacris, or java moss. Ammonia can build up in stagnant water. Increasing aeration and water circulation can help oxygenate the water and promote the growth of beneficial bacteria that convert ammonia into less harmful substances. Overcrowding can lead to increased waste production and ammonia levels. Make sure your tank is appropriately stocked and avoid adding too many fish or other tank inhabitants. While these steps can help reduce ammonia levels, it is still important to eventually obtain a test kit to monitor ammonia and other water parameters accurately. 
test kits are essential tools for maintaining a healthy and balanced aquarium environment. When choosing an LED light for a planted aquarium, it is important to consider the specific needs of your plants. Different plants have different light requirements, so it is essential to choose a light that provides the appropriate intensity and spectrum for your plants to thrive. Excessive light can promote algae growth, leading to green hair algae, green spot algae, or other types of algae taking over your tank. If your plants start to turn pale or white, it may be a sign of excessive light. This can happen when the light intensity is too high for the plants to handle. If your plants are not growing or growing very slowly, it may indicate that they are not receiving enough light to photosynthesize and grow properly. If your plants are stretching towards the light source and becoming tall and thin, it may be a sign that they are not getting enough light. It is important to note that other factors such as nutrient levels, CO2 supplementation, and water parameters can also affect plant growth. It is recommended to research the specific light requirements of your plants and adjust your lighting accordingly. Additionally, using a timer to provide a consistent photo period around 810 hours per day can help maintain a stable lighting schedule for your plants. In a self-sustaining planted dirted tank, the bacteria in the substrate can help break down organic waste and convert harmful substances into less toxic forms. Plants in a heavily planted aquarium can help absorb excess nutrients, such as nitrates from the water, reducing the risk of algae growth. They also produce oxygen through photosynthesis, which benefits the fish and other organisms in the tank. While it is true that a heavily planted aquarium can help maintain water quality and reduce the need for a traditional filter, it is important to note that a filter still plays a role in maintaining a healthy and balanced ecosystem. A filter can help remove debris, uneaten food, and other particles from the water, keeping it clean and clear. This can help prevent the accumulation of organic matter in the substrate reducing the risk of anaerobic conditions and potential issues with water quality. Some filters have activated carbon or other chemical media that can help remove impurities, odors, and discoloration from the water. This can help improve water clarity and overall water quality. A filter can provide oxygenation and water circulation, which are important for the health of the fish and plants. Oxygenation ensures an adequate oxygen supply for the fish, while water circulation helps distribute nutrients and CO2 to the plants and prevents stagnant areas where debris can accumulate. While the bacteria in the substrate can help break down waste, a filter can also provide a large surface area for beneficial bacteria to colonize. These bacteria play a crucial role in the nitrogen cycle, converting toxic ammonia and nitrite into less harmful nitrate. In summary, while a heavily planted aquarium can help maintain water quality to some extent, a filter still provides important benefits for the overall health and balance of the ecosystem. It is recommended to use a filter in conjunction with a heavily planted aquarium to ensure optimal conditions for the fish, plants, and other organisms in the tank.